Hello everyone and welcome in to the 2022 Skyline Classic presented by Discraft. It's May 22nd, 2022 and we've got some front nine action of the final round at the Silver Fox course. This is a PDGA B tier that I am your host of and we get started right here on hole number one, a downhill 294 footer. Sets up really well for a righty forehand shot or a light turnover for a righty backhand thrower. Of course, a few early trees to navigate around. And our leader of the event, Scotty Too Hotty, Scott Bertard, goes with the forehand. Next up, Christopher Meyer. Chris has won an event just down the road from this course at a different course I've hosted the cold turkey at for the last few years. Because we have a little more daylight, we can play one round at the other course, which is called the Gray Fox course. And now here we are over at the Silver Fox course. Just a couple miles apart from one another. Thomas Earhart. Going just deep and left of the pin. He came in with a three under during round number one, as did Chris. As did this guy, Andrew Nelson. And doesn't quite beat the Guardian Trees. Andrew, PDJ number 53310. Comes in with the lowest rating on the card at 969. First round was rated 1,008. He hails out of Illinois. Christopher here also out of Illinois, comes in with a 993 rating. And he has eight PDGA wins in the open division. As I mentioned, three of them came from just down the road by a few minutes. Scott Bertard, known for some quick play, typically. You've seen him in some Silver Cup footage, as well as other events, being Skyline or the Cold Turkey events here. Chris is in for the par. Earhart has a 1,008 rating coming into the event, which is exactly what the first round was rated, the three under. And immediately, he's going to knot things up here with Scotty. And Thomas Earhart, the brother, of course, to Brian, who you also see quite active in the disc golf community. The righty-lefty combo. As I mentioned, Discraft, our presenting sponsor of this year's event. Now we head over to hole number two at 324 feet. I would not recommend trying to split that tiny gap, but Boom Disc Golf does. This one plays now basically straight ahead and then down and to the left to this pin. So you really just need a straight shot, just beating that tree in the right side, right center of the fairway, and then letting it fade from there. And that's too tight to the left for, or for Tom. Oh, I already called him Brian once. To be fair now, often when I'm on a microphone, I'm interacting and talking with his brother. No edits here. I'm all raw. Mistakes and everything. Bertard will have a look. Good kick, all things considered. Andrew comes out of Lake Zurich, Illinois. And he catches right side. So Bertard, the only 
clean drive of the group. We'll see how close he is, but first, see what Tom has from the left side. Would have loved a little more height just to have that be able to drift down to the pin. Now there is OB. If somehow you fight past the basket, go through the protective trees and bushes behind it, you can actually get out to where the road is that goes through the course here. That's one of the park roads. Andrew's effort a little bit short, but it should work. Tom still work to do. In fact, if you're looking at this from somewhat of an overhead, this plays almost like it's a peninsula of sorts. As you saw, the road actually is on that right side and then road way off to this left side usually takes a terrible kick to get all the way to the road and find yourself out of bounds, but it is possible. And Chris doesn't convert. He's looking at a bogey here on two. You're probably thinking, man, I wonder how this hole played. And you know what? I'll give you some of those stats. Played at .16 over par. That's no thanks to Bertard. Just 14% of the field picking up birdies. Scotty being the only one in the card here. Just to go back, hole one played as the second easiest hole on the course. And they have a very short walk across the road over to hole three. Thank you to all my Patreon subscribers and supporters. Certainly wouldn't be getting bonus footage like this if it weren't for you. As hole three plays 330 feet. Sets up great for a righty. You're really just trying to play a shot that goes out dead straight, and then maybe it gets a low skip depending on the time of year, or maybe you have a little bit more height to it and you can carry it all the way to the pin. But definitely some congestion here in the fairway that you got to stay clear of. That's going to give Bertard a long look. And I would consider this a bonus birdie of sorts, only because it just takes so much to push all the way to the pin. Clearly the 330 isn't the challenge. It's just a matter of how hard left it actually is. Let's see how Chris can bounce back after the bogey. Maybe not cutting it quite hard enough. And here's what Andrew's left with. Deep in circle two, probably looking right at circle's edge, maybe on the backside of circle two. That circle two, circle three range. This whole average, 2.97, as Bertard is just going to flop out right next to the pin, looking to pick up his par. Good bid, but not quite enough for Chris to get it to drop. Tom is short of the pin still, but definitely a look. And that's a 
about what you're looking at. When you have a good bid for birdie, you're probably around circle's edge or just inside of it. So he's going to be a little frustrated with that as Chris is going to pick up the par. Scott Burchard, of course, famous for wearing jeans while he plays. And I've said it before, if you guys know a better player <laughs> that wears jeans in every single round of golf, you need to leave him, him or her in the comments. I, I don't know who it is. I've seen a lot of golfers. You know, Scott's been rated over 1,000 for a few different iterations. Also, uh, one of the quickest players on the planet. I think they were talking about that as he was clearing out on hole number one. Big shout out to my friends at Double G Jerky. As we head to hole four, 393 feet. Yeah, I know I call hole three a bonus, but hole four is absolutely a bonus. Just a gentle turn from left to right. Kind of narrows this entire way and finally finds the pin surrounded by trees. And incredibly punishing on this fairway, or should I say off of the fairway. If you're left or right, there's a really good chance you're going to have to spend a stroke just to get back out to the fairway. Needs to continue to turn, and not quite enough. A little bit low, but he's on the edge, so he should have a relatively easy up and down from there. Again, a really errant shot or a terrible kick could push you all the way to the left side, and if you somehow get past the trees and the brush, you could actually find the road over there. Well, that's a beautiful shot. We'll see just how short he is. Close to 280 competitors battled during this particular weekend. We had 72 in the A pool, 72 in the B pool. Those are all competitors that were playing here on Saturday. That means all the advanced divisions were currently at the other course, while this, all the pro divisions were at this course. And then on Sunday, all other divisions took up the two courses that are available. So nearly 300 competitors when it was all said and done for this B tier. If you come anywhere to the southeastern Wisconsin area, these are Kenosha County courses. I believe I had helped design the Gray Fox course sometime around 2010. And then a couple years later, we were able to come over to this park and then also design and install this course. Just three miles apart from one another down the same road. And Chris is just off the mark. So hole three, he was a little bit high. Hole four, just a little bit short. Might not be, I don't know. <laughs> just three birdies here on hole number four during the round. So definitely a bonus. In fact, bogey is so much more common. 35% of the field took a bogey, and 8% of the field took a double bogey. This came in as the second most difficult hole on the course. If you played this hole 10 times and you were able to walk away with 10 threes, you wouldn't be mad, or I don't think you should be at least. Now we head over to hole number five. You have to navigate through this tunnel as it's pushing from right to left as a gentle fade back as you're going to see the drone just kind of 
edge its way back left. You want to punch through that gap, and then you're likely going to leave yourself just a little bit short unless you've got big enough distance to get there. And this is that's pretty much a perfect shot. I'm not sure if he's got quite the distance, but in terms of the line, that's exactly what you're trying to do. Oh, okay, or that. Yeah, that looks great, too. Initially in designing this, it, it felt like it was so much longer originally than just 417 feet. In fact, I thought it was possibly even going to be a par 4, but that was before a lot of the trees and brush was cleared out, and then getting there and realizing, oh, it's 417. Okay, so... Your top level players will be getting there. I think your regional players are going to have a little bit more of a struggle. Another great line. So Chris didn't quite make the bend here. Looks like he didn't quite get out either. That's going to be trouble. And the pitch up is likely going to lead him to a bogey. So, Bertard shot four under. The other three guys on this card shot three under, and then there were nine players that shot two under during the opening round. So certainly anyone's game here, and nine people were all tied up just a couple of strokes off the lead, and that's just outside of this lead card. And Bertard's jumper isn't quite enough. And this is one of the closest drives I've seen yet. We've seen Tom not quite dialed in on the first couple of holes, but picks up the birdie on five. Nice work. Five played as the second most difficult hole on the course. You hear those guys saying that was insane. And I'm going to go ahead and say Tom actually literally the only birdie in the entire open field. To say bonus would be an understatement. Well, pars and the bogey by Chris. We head over to one of my favorites, hole six. Again, carved straight up. It's a gentle incline the entire way. Certainly not drastic, but enough to know that you're throwing uphill and then also you have a low ceiling right and left side of the fairway a little bit rough not quite as punishing as what you see back on say hole number four but you definitely want to find the center of the fairway and this traditionally plays as one of the easier holes on the course it's a relatively soft par four at 501 feet probably plays closer to 575 maybe Maybe 600. With the gentle incline throughout. Also going to play as one of the easiest holes on the course. In fact, the third easiest here today. Beautiful Saturday afternoon in mid to late May. Well, Chris may think otherwise at the moment, but beautiful day out there. Temps in the 60s. And that's pushing hard left. Well, it's going to likely take him out of birdie range unless he comes up with something. And you can see you're really just trying to find the fairway here. Give yourself a look, maybe from 250 or 300 to get up to the pin and then try and walk away with the birdie. Nice forehand from the left side of the fairway for Tom.
and let's be real, if it were 21 degrees or 81 degrees, Scott Burchard's in jeans. I think we should get him a jean sponsor. I don't know how I haven't thought of that in the last 20 years of knowing him. I don't know if you guys think. Lee? Guess? Bugle Boy? Jabot? I, I don't know. Uh, there's. <laughs> who do you guys think he should reach out to if he wanted a gene sponsor? I think that's what I need to know in the comments. Good birdie by Andrew brings him back to par for the round. Bertard's going to get up and down, still take the birdie. This averaged at 3.62, the third easiest hole on course. So hole one was the easiest hole. Uh, correction, second easiest. Hole six is the third easiest. And Chris is going to be a little frustrated. He's not picking up some birdies on the easier ones here. We head over to seven. A little climb up the hill to go into the opening. OB Road on the left side. That's the same road that serpentines throughout the entire park. But then it has a gentle decline here down to the pin. You don't want to go too deep. As you can see, surrounded by trees and bushes. I feel like a very picturesque style hole on this course. And clearly not one that we had to carve out of the woods. Except for the little nook at the very end. Uh, that might have that might have saved a stroke, and Bertard knows it. I think he turned that one over too much, and that was heading toward the road. Not sure if it would have had enough time to come back or not. We'll see. <laughs> I guess we'll see. That was turning in a little too tight. But we'll see if he's got a look from there. Chris is definitely going to need to get something going here. This is a stop on the Wisconsin Disc Golf Tour. A tour that's been around for about 30 years. Upwards of 15 or 18 or 20 stops. I, I Honestly, I can't even recall. I recall when it was four <laughs> back in the 90s. And then it expanded to eight or nine or ten. And then it's been in the teens for quite a few years. And now I know we're upwards of around 20 events on the tour. Points are accumulated and earned from March all the way until usually late September or early October. And then divisional champions are crowned in upwards of 15 or 18 different divisions throughout the year. So Andrew doesn't convert, and Tom's going to have a similar distance with a little bit more obstruction to it. This event also located, like I said, in Kenosha County, so actually within just a matter of minutes of the Illinois state line. So quite a few Illinois players come up, and, well, Tom making the best of his look on seven. That's going to push him to three under on the round. This is Bert's hard to save his par. And we're going to see a new leader, outright leader in Tom.
Both seven, as you can imagine, playing pretty much right in the middle of the pack. Not a ton of birdies, not a ton of bogeys either. And we head over to hole number eight. We're going back downhill. This one plays down and left, and it's very sharp downhill. In fact, you can't really see the pin from when you're standing up on the tee. Great decision by the guys over at Pastry Dyes to uh, head down and try and get the swing here. You're pretty much just playing a big righty hyzer to a blind area. And as you can see, that looks like it's going to be right, maybe pin high, but to the right of the basket. Standing on the tee would give you almost no perspective of where it's landing. So it's a lot of trust here. Andrew got has it dialed in. That's a great shot. One of my favorite parts of this course in particular is, I'd really have to think about it, but... There's elevation or some type of elevation on almost all 18 holes on this course. Some a little bit more stark than others, but there's some form of elevation on every single hole. And Bertard, of course, very quickly got up and through so nobody could follow that. He's not exactly... This play's not exactly friendly for the cameras, and that's okay. We're just going to miss your shots every once in a while when you do that, Scotty. Um, not much of a look has to pitch out, and you're going to find that Bertard's actually in a similar spot. And if you haven't noticed already, obviously a premium place on finding the fairway out on this course. The holes aren't incredibly long, but you have to find the fairway. Otherwise, sometimes you're not going to be left with anything. You can scramble to save, but you're not going to have a look likely to actually get the birdie. And Chris needs one. Picks it up here on eight. He's still one over for the round. He's going to be back within four of Tom. And our closest to the pin, and Andrew's not going to take advantage. Sixteen percent of our field birdied this, average two point nine two, so just barely under par. Tom still won over Bertard. We'll see what the chase card is doing when we cut out of our front nine. Lubeck Studios, big shout out to them. Along with Boom Disc Golf, as we're here on the par 4, it's just 480, but <laughs> plays with a left to right bend. Then you have to push through quite a few trees, and then you have a somewhat guarded green. Definitely not getting there in one shot. Or if you do, you've thrown just an incredible drive, and then you probably have a throw in from at least 100 feet. And that looks pretty good. We'll see what that does for Andrew. Looks to be set up pretty well. Burtard, of course, wasting no time. Now it's just a matter of seeing how good those drives are. Hole nine, because it's the par four, playing as the sixth easiest hole out here. And as you can see, even if you put yourself in the center of the fairway here, you're still going to have probably a tunnel or a gap to hit of these trees. So you're not entirely in the clear. 
I think there's plenty of space there, but you still have work to do. Nice finesse shot there out of Tom. Can't say I didn't try it. <laughs> Andrew trying to go up that right side route doesn't keep it clean. Now he's wide open. This should be an easy up and down to try and save the par. Or birdie. No. Great bid. And Bertard doesn't like it out of his hand. And so Tom's in for birdie. He's going to move to seven under. So even though he had the bogey back on hole number two, he still manages to go four under in the front nine. That's going to be one of your better scores on the front. Chris fights back to even par. And Scotty Tuhati will tap in, but he still has a one-stroke deficit as he's heading into the back nine. Like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Again, tell me what sponsor he should be going after if we want to get him a brand new gene sponsor, but that'll make you eligible to win a giveaway. Meanwhile, Tom's got that lead. William Rockcastle trying to fight off that third card, as is Sean Butler. We've got all the action and more on the other side. We'll see you guys in the back nine.